Hi everybody, we've got another new day, another new trail to cover out here in Beacon. I'm trying to do as much as I can on the trails, getting ready for the Breakneck Ridge Half Marathon. We're gonna be going up a new way and to possibly a new peak that I've never been to before. So we'll check it out and uh, hopefully it's uh, enjoyable for all of you. But I really don't know what we're gonna see. So trail running, today's video, no idea what we're gonna find. We've got clear skies today and the trees really aren't growing in yet. There's some green starting to pop up, but all this will fill in eventually. I can actually see in person down to the river. I can see up to where the main beacon lookout is up here. So lots of views for me right now, but we're kind of deep in the woods. And uh, I'm just trying to stick to what I said in the last video of keeping the first mile pretty slow, doing a lot of like speed hiking, not really even trying to run at all just because there's a lot of climbing in the first mile, really no matter where you are in this area where I live. So again, as that translates to the half marathon, I can't get used to going out really fast in the beginning of a 13 mile mountainous race. I'm gonna burn out right away, even if the first mile feels good. So trying to get used to going slow in the first mile. I gotta catch my breath. Huh. There was a section there that just was not runnable. It was like a wall going straight up to the top here. But it was a fun climb, a fun section. And we've got some great views today, great weather. Oh, I'm out of breath. Huh. While I catch my breath, quick question. I know a lot of you ran the New York City Half Marathon, got the shirt on. Does anyone else feel like it ran extremely big? compared to other New York Roadrunner sizes? Let me know down below. This thing's huge on me and I already shrunk it in the dryer once. It's just so big compared to the other shirts they've given me. But anyway, I'm gonna start going around, come over this peak. I think it's downhill for the most of the way from here. And this was a fun new spot to explore. I'm learning all the different peaks around me. Beacon was just down the other side here. So you can pretty much see my house from here. And that's the coolest thing about being here in Beacon for me is I love New York City, but to have this as your backyard, it's pretty cool too. And New York City's still not far away. Anyway, let's go. Let's go. I just gotta keep going. Oh. 
hate this. I hate this, but I love it. Right, we are all done with today's run. It was a tough one. I got a little bit of a blister on my big toe. Just a lot of elevation today and you know coming down the hill I think more than anything you know I'm sliding my feet within my shoes just need to tighten them up a little bit and uh, you know just more and more stuff I'm doing on the trails is putting more pressure on one spot on my toe where it just needs to build up a little bit of like a callus so it doesn't get a blister. It's not bad. I just feel it coming. Uh, so we'll have to see what I can do to try and avoid that as we keep going out there on the trails. Uh, it's Frankie's birthday was just the other day. Forgot to mention that earlier in the video. He got to spend a lot of time with family. Megan's family came up yesterday, so that was a lot of fun. We gave him a couple of treats, some cookies and things like that uh, for dogs. So he had a good time, I think, with everybody over. Now, as far as the stats for today's run, we'll jump right into it and throw it up on your screen. It was a 4.6 mile run. It took about an hour and 13 minutes out there on the trail. So it came out to almost 16 minutes per mile, about 15.53. So that was more where I wanted to be for these easier trail runs. Or, you know, in this case, it really wasn't all that easy because it was a little bit more elevation than usual. There was a few spots where I was going up and down. So I wasn't just, you know, making one ascent and then coming down. I was sort of going up a little bit, coming down, having to regain that elevation and keep making our way up in sort of a wave like pattern. So it did lead to almost 1700 feet of elevation. A lot of good stuff out there, good stuff to get into my legs, good training for me, again, leading into this breakneck ridge half. And again, if there's any questions or anything you have about the stats, feel free to let me know down below. But everything on your screen is pretty much straight out of Strava and Garmin. And that's all the data I have. <laughs> but I will throw out one tip for you for anybody who's newer to trail running or looking to get into hiking and trail running up in the mountains, maybe coming out of New York City. I've heard other people recently start to talk about wanting to come up to the trails themselves. And I think my number one tip really is just to familiarize yourself with your footwear, understand how much friction you have on that outsole on many different surfaces, whether it be rock, wood, you know, like leafy ground, mud, dry dirt, sand, uh, wet rock, you know, understand the friction that you have from you, your shoe in all those conditions. You know, start with a light hike if you're not really used to the shoes at all and work your way up to running because you really need to understand how much grip you have as you start to move faster, especially on the downhill. It can be very easy to slide out and kind of fall down on your butt. And that can really kind of stink depending on how sharp or hard the ground is and the rocks beneath you are. <laughs> So you just need to make sure you understand how much grip you have in your shoes before you really go out there and start running, especially if you have a tough time going uphill in the beginning and do a lot more walking. You may be encouraged to then run down the hill, but just know that that puts two things, a lot of, a lot of real strain and uh, impact into your quads. You'll feel them burning the next day if you go blisteringly fast for whatever your pace is down the hill. <laughs> you'll feel that pounding the next morning. And again, you'll just also not necessarily understand if you're newer to a pair of shoes that you're wearing on the trails, you won't understand how much grip you have with the force of gravity pulling you down, the slope of the trail or the rocks or whatever you're running on, coupled with, again, now that momentum that you have going down, you just wanna be careful and really make sure you understand the shoes that you're wearing before you start to really run on unfamiliar ground. I'm learning still myself, but that's a big thing that I've come to understand is really make sure I understand the friction and the grip of my footwear before I do anything a little bit more upbeat and faster pace on the mountain. So I'll leave you with that tip just to throw one other thing in there today. A really nice day for me. Hope you enjoyed it as well. And yeah, we'll end it here. Have a good one, everyone. And thanks for stopping by. Take care.